Its tentacles run deep. Its victims are many, most of whom have no idea for several years that they are even affected. This morning, in this Behind the Mystery Rare and Genetic Diseases segment, we're going to discuss a very unusual cancer, mesothelioma. Our guests this morning are attorney Mark Byrne and also pulmonary specialist Dr. David Camelhar. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, all Good morning, Good morning, Doctor. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for being here. Doctor, let me start with you. Tell me exactly what is mesothelioma. Mesothelioma is a cancerous condition of the mesothelium. The mesothelium is the delicate membrane uh, that wraps around the lung uh, and which coats the chest cavity where the lung sits. Mm -hmm. uh, during normal breathing, those two surfaces glide against one another for normal, comfortable breathing that allows irritation not to occur uh, in that spot. If an asbestos is inhaled, uh, asbestos moves its way toward the edge of the lung Mm -hmm. and reaches the mesothelium, reaches the edge of the lung, and can cause inflammation in those delicate cells. Asbestos has been directly linked to this uh, malignant change. Asbestos is by far and away the most common cause of mesothelioma. Okay. Mark, let me bring you in. Let's talk about asbestos. Tell me about it. Asbestos is a naturally occurring mineral that is mined. And for many, many years, the workers in those mines were not told about the terrible dangers involved without uh, using the proper respiratory equipment or other things to protect themselves, particularly from breathing in this terrible, terrible fiber. And you know, gentlemen, this brings to mind, and correct me if I'm wrong, the World Trade Center 9-11 after the fact, so many rescue workers, people volunteering, helping, and they weren't really wearing anything to protect themselves. And am I wrong, doctor, that many cases came out after that? The latency period is at least 10 years uh, most often 30 years, but certainly the 9-11 experience, the World Trade Center experience, is a very good example of people who are now um, beginning to feel the effects of inhaling materials that nobody recognizes being problematic uh, while they were exposed to it. And Mark, your thoughts? Well, so many of those heroes, the men and women who went down to the site, rescue and recovery workers, were told, of course, that the site was okay. Don't worry about it. They weren't given the proper respiratory equipment. And here they were exposed mm -hmm. to this toxic soup, which included asbestos and other very, very dangerous materials. And so today, unfortunately, we're seeing the beginning of those exposures, which not only includes mesothelioma, but lung cancer, which is also caused by exposure to asbestos. Doctor, are there symptoms that one could be aware of? Symptoms of mesothelioma are the same symptoms of any uh, lung condition. Uh, the lung can make you cough, the lung can make you short of breath, uh, there could be uh, pain in the chest and perhaps others, uh, but there's nothing unique uh, to mesothelioma. All right, gentlemen, I want you to stay right there because we're going to take a quick break, and after the break, we're going to return and talk about who's at risk, who is exactly at risk. You might be actually surprised to learn how close this could hit home. It's very surprising. Stay with us. Welcome back, everyone. Before the break, we were discussing mesothelioma. We are rejoined by pulmonary specialist Dr. David Camelhar and attorney Mark Byrne, senior partner with the national law firm Napoli Byrne Ripka Skolnick. Gentlemen, look at these numbers, and I'd like our viewers to look at this as well. And this was astonishing to me. Approximately 3,000 new cases of mesothelioma are diagnosed every year. And the 3,000 does not count the many thousands of additional cases of lung cancer, which are also known to have been caused by exposure to um, asbestos. Many of these are workers, uh, construction workers. Most of them have been working around or near it because asbestos is everywhere. But that doesn't include all of them. We have uh, many cases of people who are at home. In fact, Doctor, you have an amazing story and a very sad one uh, directly related to this. It was really one of the first cases of uh, mesothelioma that uh, I, I saw uh, that I was involved with. It was a, uh, a girl who, uh, when her father worked in the uh, Brooklyn Navy Yard, uh, he came home and she was responsible for washing his clothes. Uh, and from that exposure, he had the asbestos on his clothes. So if there is such a thing as secondhand exposure, I think, I think that's a good example of that. She developed mesothelioma. Uh, obviously, she knew that she had asbestos in her environment because her father worked there, but it's, it's the hair dryers, the toasters, 
um, the other home improvements. Mark, it's almost like materials products uh, that we use every day. Absolutely, and this is what we call take home exposure. Can we talk about some treatments? The best treatment is surgery. Uh, if there is a localized case where there is one area of, um, of chest wall uh, that is involved, uh, then there is still room for that. Mark, let me end with you. If someone out there maybe knows of someone that's been exposed or, or, or wonders if they've been exposed, what options do they have? Their real options are hope. They have to remain hopeful. As Dr. Kamelhar has indicated, there are, they continue to do work every day but they must, must get uh, medical help as soon as possible. Thank you so much, gentlemen, both thank of you, you for Olga. your time. Doctor, thank you for creating awareness, and you, Mark. Thank you. thank you. And to learn more about asbestos and its connection to mesothelioma, the deadly form of cancer, and to learn more about your legal rights, go to this website. That's napoliburn.com, napoliburn.com.